In this video, I'm going to teach you how to plan your website. When you first get started building your website, it may seem like a daunting task because you're not sure where to start. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using Web Starts to create my website. And as I go along, I'm going to share with you a few tips that will help you make decisions and plan so that your website makes sense when you're finished and so that you don't get lost along the way. As you can see, I'm on webstarts.com and the first thing that you'll need to do is sign up for an account. So click get started, it's free. For this demo, I'm selecting the start from scratch template, but you can use any template that you want. My recommendation is to go through these templates and find one that has some images that reflect the nature of your business and or a layout that you feel like you can work with. Once you select a design, know that that design is 100% customizable. So even if you feel like you made a mistake and you chose the wrong one, it's no big deal. You can change it at any time or you can change every property about that design. I'm just signing up for an account, choosing a username and password. And in a moment here, I'm going to verify. That I'm a real person using the text message. So I'm going over to my phone. I'm grabbing the code that was sent to me so that I can proceed. All right, in this step, what you're doing is you're choosing a web address. So this is the domain name that you would give someone so they could find your website on the internet. If you're signing up for a free account, which is what I'm going to show you in this demonstration, then you just want to choose a keyword. So this one, I'm just going to call this planning.webstarts.com. If you want to have a top level domain name like your very own.com, you can do that later or you can do it right now. Just enter the desired domain name in here. Make sure you're, you choose your desired domain name extension and click continue. You can also connect a domain name that you already registered with another registrar. And if you have the information to log into your registrar, then you'll be able to make the changes that will allow that domain name to work with Web Starts. But again, for this demo, we're just choosing the free web address. I'm choosing planning.webstarts.com. Notice as well, you can do this later. If you do that, you'll just get a random subdomain is what it's called, which will be a string of numbers.webstarts.com. Well, it turns out that planning.webstarts.com is not available. So I'm going to have to choose something else. I'm going to choose planning 2019. and click continue. So you see if you choose a web address that's not available, it's going to prompt you and then you're going to have to select another one. When you first log into your Web Starts account, I think it's really important to watch this video. This video walks you through step by step all the things that you need to know to be familiar with how Web Starts works, where you can find things, and some of the thoughts behind why we do things the way we do them at Web Starts to make you successful. I'm closing out. I've obviously seen the video. I made the video. So here we go. We're looking at the dashboard and we want to edit our site. But before we do that, just a quick look around. You have all these application panels down here. These are different things that you can connect to your website with Web Starts. There's so much more than just your website. There's really a complete business automation suite that you can uh, implement and it will take care of all kinds of things that you need to run a successful business online. For example, if you're selling products, you have a store. If you want to drive traffic to your website, you'll probably need to create content regularly and need a blog. If you're capturing leads on your website, which you should be, and Web Starts comes with a form uh, builder or contact form that you can add to your pages to do that, then you're going to have to follow up with those people through email marketing. And so that's there. You can get a business 
email address that matches your domain name. So instead of showing up to a meeting and saying like Bob's carpet cleaning at gmail.com, you would have Bob at Bob's carpet cleaning.com. And it just looks way better. You have context manager, which is really a complete CRM or customer relationship manager. In there, you can do things like store all your customer data and the things you need to run your business successfully. You have analytics. That's just like tells you who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, which keywords are working on a search engine, which ones are not, where they're clicking on a page, everything that you need to know. SSL certificate, that's just so that you can make sure that your domain name is secure on the web. Live chat, that's so you can chat live on your website with your customers or your site visitors. And then we have a number of traffic products down here, Traffic Booster, Listing Express, Local Listing. I think they're all pretty self-explanatory, and you can click on those if you want later. And we have Site Members, which is where you manage uh, the members of your website if you created a membership website. And then we have Advertising Credits, which are just kind of a bonus when you upgrade to one of the paid plans. Here we also have Add Domain and Upgrade. And we also have the link to your site that you just created, a little icon where you can change your web address at any time, as I mentioned earlier. And then you can change the complete design of your website as well by clicking on this little link. Just keep in mind that your content will be lost if you change your design. But good news, we also have backups if that does happen. So anyway, let's jump in. Let's talk about editing the basic website and a little bit about how you plan to build your website. So now I'm in the editor and I've really only got one page here. It's the home page and I'm wondering, okay, what, where do I start? What do I put on my home page? And to come up with the answer to that question, you need to ask, what is the goal of my website? What am I trying to accomplish with this website? In my experience, people are either trying to sell a product, sell a service, or convey information, or maybe do all three of those or two of the three. So they're trying to sell a product and convey information. So for example, you might have someone who has a product and they need to teach you about the product before you see the value in it. Well, they're going to need to convey information about it. And then they're also going to need to give you a way to actually buy the product. Now, depending on your goal, you might want to try a few different things uh, when planning for your website. So uh, let me give you the example. If you have a lot of products that you want to sell, let's say an entire catalog of products that you want to sell, I recommend that you use the store app to sell them. That way, when you're creating your products, you're creating a database of all the products that you sell and they are appearing on one web page called store in on your website and everything is conforming the images the title the description the pricing it's all conforming it all looks nice and neat and all you have to do is input all that data and of course the web starts store app also has the ability to import that data so you don't have to enter every product one at a time that is a much better idea than let's say for example trying to create a product page for each product you sell and then trying to create a product selection page or a, an add to cart page for each item you sell but web starts gives you the flexibility to do all of those things and that's why it's super important to know up front okay what direction are you trying to go if you're trying to go with a lot of products that you're trying to sell online in a catalog fashion use the store app don't build an individual page for every single product that will be less efficient likewise if you're starting a news and information website and you're all about conveying information and you're going to have hundreds of articles use the blog app the blog app acts is what's called a cms and what it does is it creates a database of all your articles. So instead of having to create a page, drag and drop each design element where you want it to appear on one page at a time, and then also having to keep track of where everything is pixel perfect located on all those pages, you're just having kind of a header and a footer on a blog page, and then you're just creating the data and it's populating in the middle and you're not making 
a bunch of design changes and you're not managing a bunch of pages. You're just managing a database of articles. So you go back in there, you want to change an article, you edit the article and then it's, uh, you publish it. It's automatically updated on the site. Now, if you're doing a basic website, let's say for example, a small business and you think you might need five to 10 pages, here are some of the common pages that you might need. A home page. that's obviously the place that people are going to go to when they put in your web address. So if you have, you know, let's say for example, bobscarpetcleaning.com, it would go to the home page when they enter in the domain name. Now, in addition to the home page, you might also want a landing page. And a landing page is a page you send someone to from an advertisement or a promotion. And your landing page could be something like bobscarpetclean.com slash discount.html or whatever. And maybe you're sending people from some Google advertisements or Facebook advertisements you're running to that landing page. And then that landing page can be totally different than your homepage. On your homepage, you, you're probably trying to convey things like, for example, you know, who you are and why someone should trust you and, you know, what to do next if you're interested in the services and some of the awards that you won for credibility or whatever. But on a landing page, you might just be coming from somebody who was like, I'm looking for carpet cleaning in my area and then the name of the town. And then you just want to provide them a page that says, yes, you found someone who does carpet cleaning in this area, click here to get a quote or whatever. So that would be the example of a landing page. Another type of page that's popular is an about page. You can say, oh, about page, I don't really know why I need an about page so much. But what an about page does is it gives you the opportunity to explain things like how long you've been in business, what inspired you to get started, what makes you different or better than your competitors. These are all places that you can add this. You can also talk about here's my team. So you can gain some cre credibility by saying, well, it's not just me. I'm not just a one man army or fly by night operation. I have a couple of guys that work for me or whatever, you know, makes sense for your business depending on the size. So don't forget to add an about page. So we've got a home page, landing page, about page. And then this one's super important, which is a contact page because no matter how much information you convey on the website, there's a ton of people that are just going to want to know how do I get a hold of you? And they're going to want a contact page. And what you should have on your contact page is your phone number, your physical address when it's relevant, maybe a map that shows how to get to your physical address if that's relevant, but definitely a contact form that asks for things like their name and email address, maybe a comments field. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Some of the other pages that I know people like to add to their website, they add calendar pages. I see a lot of times if you're a church or organization, you want to have a calendar on your website that shows this is when we have this going on, or this is when we have that going on. I also see this commonly with teams and clubs as well. So if you have a baseball team or a soccer team, you want a calendar on your website to show the parents of the kids on the team or whatever, when practice is or when a game is. So a calendar page can be very popular. Another page that's extremely popular is just one that says photos or gallery. And that would just be where you're sharing or showing off photos uh, you know, that you've taken of, you know, something relevant to your website. So again, going back to a soccer team, maybe it's a bunch of photos, team photos that you took or whatever, and you share them there, you know, however you want to use that. But people like to show off photos. So a page dedicated to photos, or if you're, let's say you're a woodworker, you build handcrafted furniture, you may not want to sell that furniture through the website with an online store, but you'd rather get someone on the phone or have them email you or get in a conversation about what they would like you to create, but you want to give them an example of, of your work. So you have a whole page that just is a photos of your work and the same thing, maybe you're a landscaper and you do that same thing. You want to show before and after photos or something like that. So a photos page can be extremely popular or a popular choice. So, so far we have the home page, landing page, about page, contact, photos, and then some of the other pages could be like product or service. So you could have a page just dedicated to talking about your product. You could have a page just dedicated to talking about your service. 
don't feel like you need to create dozens of pages if you only have five or maybe six real pages that are going to have an impact. Just stick to those five or six pages and just make sure that those five or six pages are conveying the things that you want to convey. So now that you have an idea about the different pages that you might need, and of course you could go on and you know create anything if I didn't mention a particular page and you have an idea in your head, then you can create that page, of course. But uh, let's talk about how to lay out the individual pages. So the first thing is in, in web starts is go to your home page and let's talk about this for a second. So in web starts, the easiest thing to do if you're creating a website from scratch is to create your first layout in a way that you can just replicate it over and over and over to create those additional pages. Because one of the features of web starts is to come up here and go file new, and then you choose copy and then you choose the page you would like to copy and create a new page. It's a very fast way to create pages that all have the same structure. And that's super important for coming across as professional and making it easy for people to navigate your website. We've done some things to help you with that as well. For example, we've divided the page into a header, which is this top section that's highlighted in green when it's selected, a body, which is the middle section, and then a footer. So anything you place in the header or the footer of a web page and you'll see when I drag an element into the header, for example, it highlights in green. Those things are going to be in that same location on each page, even if you create a blank page. So for example, let's say that I just wanted to have this headline start from scratch, and I save this, and I go in here, and I click, and I create a new page, and I make a copy of the home page, or I make a blank, I'm sorry, just choose a blank page. Start from scratch is going to be on the top of that blank page that I created because every blank page comes with the header and footer enabled by default and everything you put in the header and the footer is in the same place on every page. We do this so that you, it's easy to create a structure for your website. Now you can veer from that structure. All you have to do is click view and then disable the header or footer and then they'll go away. So for example, if you don't want that header, you can just do like that. And if you want to bring it back, you can do that as well. Now talking about the individual structure of the page, the home page is probably the most important page of your website and for the most part it will also act as your landing page. And the things that you want to take into consideration for the home page, number one, when somebody comes to the page you need to convey to them in about three or four seconds exactly what it is that you do and that's going to be called your headline. So your headline is just you know big bold text and I usually use this heading L style which is set to 48 pixels by default and that's going to go somewhere up here uh, what's called above the fold so in other words they're not going to have to scroll to see it and it's going to read like a newspaper so if i sell widgets it's going to be like we sell widgets you know and that's going to be the main headline that they're going to get so when they land on that page within three or four seconds they know this place sells widgets Okay, the next thing that I'm going to mention is your logo or your company name. Your logo or company name should go in the header because you really want it to be on the same place of the website or on the same page every time. I'm going to use an, an icon to just to show you. So let's just say, for example, this is my logo. Let's just pretend this is my logo. I'm going to drag that up into my header. I'm going to resize it a little bit using the handles. You can do that as well. And now that's going to be in the same place on every single page. And that's my logo. And then maybe I put my company name and I choose a little bit of a smaller text. So I chose paragraph L. You can choose whatever text size you want. Uh, but I'm choosing one that's a little bit smaller than my headline because I don't want people to focus on the name of my business. I want them to focus on what I do. So that's another tip that you can write down. Focus on what you do, not on the name of your business. I'm going to call it Blue Ribbon Widgets. And I know that this isn't super 
design, uh, you know, blowing it away on the graphics design just yet, but we're trying to get a general layout of the page and show you, you know, how you can lay out your pages to be successful. So this video again is about planning. Now notice that this little bar here, this is actually the menu that people will use to navigate from page to page on your website. And so as I create more pages, for example, an about or a contact page, this little bar is gonna fill up and I can have drop down menus if I don't have the space to display each page name on this little bar, but you should have an idea about how much room and where you're gonna display uh, that, um, that navigation menu on your page. So right now I'm just saying, well, okay, I'll look, that'll look good there. Now the next thing that you probably want to do is say a little bit about what makes your widgets better or different. And you can do that, the way that I recommend you do that is by adding a little kind of bullet point of text uh, below your headline. So you, these would be like the three big benefits of choosing your widgets over another one. And to do that, I've selected a little text box and now I'm just duplicating it. And one of the tips here, and I'm kind of breaking the rule of thumb, is to design the entire text box first. So if you want to have a, an icon above each one of these little phrases, which is a very popular thing or style to have uh, on the web. So let's see, let's choose these little widgets. Like, so let's say you want to have this be centered right above that text. Uh, you would create kind of the styles to this whole, you know, your colors and any effects and styling you want to one of these, and then you would choose it and clone it over and over and over. That would save you a little bit of time rather than what I'm going to have to do now, which is, you know, clone each a little element and then tweak each little element. So if I wanted all these widgets to be, you know, blue, for example, I would have to go through one at a time and make them blue, but it would have been way more efficient if I knew I wanted them all blue to just select one and then duplicate it and move it over. So hopefully you get the idea about how duplication works. Now the next thing is, well, I, this looks all cramped to me, so I don't want these widgets running right into this headline. I want to create some space in between them. But it's kind of difficult to drag each little element one at a time. So what we have is this little smart handle, and what you do is you drag it down, it pushes down all the elements underneath, and then you can use the guidelines to put it in line with the rest of the elements. So there I've created a little bit of space. And again, for this video, we're just talking about planning. So this is what's called a wireframe. It's just the general layout of the website. We can go back in here and tweak the look and feel later. Now, another thing that uh, you want to take into consideration, I haven't done it on this site, is if you have an image on your site, let's say, for example, let's see if I can find an image of a widget. You want those images to back up whatever it is that you do. So, if you build widgets, you're going to want to find a photo of widgets, but more realistically, let's say you have soaps, you're going to want your images to reflect soaps and, you know, things that are created along those lines, you know, whatever it is that you're in business doing, those are the types of images you want to use on your site. So far, I haven't added any images, uh, but if I did, it, it, I'd have to make sure that they were in line with what I'm selling so that when people glance at my page, they know exactly that they're at the right place. And now that you've got your headline, if you get some bullet points that talk about why your product's great and all this, you probably want to add a call to action and that probably means a button. And when you create a button, the button isn't going to go anywhere if you don't have any other pages because uh, the idea behind the button is you're going to link it to somewhere else on the web. So or probably another page on your website. For example, let's say that 
I was selling widgets and I knew that I had 40 different widgets. I used the Web Start Store app to create a database of my 40 different widgets and all the different shapes, sizes, and colors. And now I wanted somebody just to go to my catalog page and choose the proper widget that they would like to buy. This would say shop now and then I would link it to the store page that I created on my website. And you can change the content of this button by just clicking on the settings cog and then you would just type whatever your message is. You can also add an icon to that if you wanted. You know, so if I wanted to have the little widgets icon, I could do that and then you can switch where you want it placed on there. And then you can change where it links to. So right now it's just linking back to the home page. So you're not going anywhere if you do this. Now something I also recommend is, you know, save your your page regularly. Uh, that way you just won't lose your work. And another important tip, don't get too creative with your text and your fonts. I'm using a basic Open Sans font and I it's cool if you want to use you know, something a little more decorative, especially for your company logo or name or something like that. And we offer access to over 700 fonts. Uh, if you need more fonts, you just click on add new fonts or add fonts. And then you, you go through here and you choose the ones you want. But for the most part, make it easy for people to read. That means black text on a white background. That means one of the more basic looking uh, fonts, at least for the stuff that you know they need to read because uh, it, it can be hard if your font size is too small or if it's really curly Q and, and very decorative. And also if it's, you know, like a real light gray on, on a white background or maybe it's just the color scheme is just really bad. Like maybe you've got like orange text on yellow. That would be really difficult to read. So just be savvy and aware of that as you're creating your content. The reason why we use these like bullet points, by the way, is that people tend not to read paragraph out of par over paragraph of things that you've read or written. Uh, they like to skim the page. They just want to quickly boom, 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 find out the information, make sure they're on the wet, right website, hit the highlights and go. That's just the nature of the web. So don't write, you know, two page paragraph product descriptions and things like that. They're, they're not going to get read. And they're really, and a lot of times, and there's studies that show that they'll overwhelm the person visiting the website, and then they will just forget about it altogether. Now, um, I recommend that if you like to take phone calls, you put your phone number somewhere up here on the header. A lot of people don't necessarily want to take phone calls. It just depends on your type of business, but... For the most part, a small business, like, you know, like I said, like if you're a barber, I, I just as soon take a phone call because it gives me a chance to establish credibility. It makes certain that I have an opportunity to ask, answer questions that a prospective customer or buyer might have. I just think it's a great idea to put your phone number up there. But for the sake of moving forward, let's go ahead and create another page. And I talked about creating uh, an about page. So I'm just going to create an about page. I'm going to do it from a blank page to show you what that looks like. I just chose blank page. I call it about, and then boom, you can see there's the header and the footer. And then about is automatically added to this menu that I was discussing earlier. And then I'm going to just go in and I'm going to create a contact page as well. But one thing to keep in mind is when you're laying out these pages is of course, if you have a layout that you think you're going to use over and over, you'd be duplicating that layout. So if you come up with a nice layout that you think you could use over and over, I would suggest you use it. So in this case, if I wanted my contact page to look a lot like my home page, just choose to copy from your home page and then create. So let me show you what that looks like. So now this is actually my contact page and I can distinguish between the two by just putting something like contact us where the headline is. And then maybe I'm like, well, I don't really want to show the bullet points of what's so great about our product, or I don't want to show the button, but I do want to show a form. You can just go through, select these things and delete the things you don't want. And then for the form, what you do is you just, you're just going to add, let's see, we want name, you know, paragraph text. 
you, you're just going to add the things you want on your contact form. You can line that up there. And then there's other things that you can put on there, like your, your uh, phone number and your physical address and a map. And then also something about web starts is like, if you don't know what you want to add to your page, I'm just going to delete that form for a second. You can go over here to contact blocks, just click contact, and then just add this whole block in here. This is kind of like a, what it is, is a strip. And all these other elements are grouped onto this strip. So let's bring that contact us to the front layer and let's just connect it to the strip, which is what I did now. And so now rather than me having to add all these individual pieces of content, they're already there. This is actually a map right here. Just gotta update it with a location. So that could be the location of your business or whatever. And then you're updated. And then if you wanna change the style of the form, for example, you can do that because that was a little bit different than uh, the button style that we had on the home page. So those are just kind of like little things that you do to, to make things look consistent across your website. So now I've got the home about contact and uh, let's show you what it's like to add a blog and a store too. So I'm just going to save my work for just a sec. And all these pages, what they do is they support your main message. And I'm going to add a store to this website. And it takes just a second because when a store is being added, you have to copy all this database stuff. And Anyway, here we go. Now we're ready. Now I can create my first product. And I can say blue widget. These are the highest quality blue widgets. I can upload an image of my widget or whatever. I can, I'm just going to grab something generic like this concept logo. And then I'm going to put in here a price, you know, my widgets are a dollar. You can do things like associate a category, set up uh, shipping, product variants. So if you wanted like size and then another one would be color and then another one would be material you could set up all the material size and color options uh, for each but i'm not going to do that for now when you're ready you just click create and then your products created and since we created a store i'm not now on the store page so notice that up here i'm on the store page this is my store okay my store is added to my menu and when I view my live website and I click on store, then somebody can click on the blue widget. They get a closer look at it. They can enter a quantity of them and they can add it to the cart. And then of course they can check out. And so hopefully you get the concept here is that instead of going in here and creating the, each page, I'm just double clicking on my store and then I'm creating more products. And as I create, another product like for example this time i'm just going to say red widget and i'm going to add an image for that but it's just going to be a slightly different image so you can tell the difference use this little light bulb image just pretend this is an image of a red widget and then i'm going to put in my price for that and then I can set up my variants and whatever for that. But like I said, not doing that for now, but close that out. And then that's added. Now, another thing you can do is you can change things. Like for example, this is number of columns. Well, each one of these products is in an imaginary column. So it says four right now. So that's why I'm about halfway across the page. But if I only want to show two then I can just reduce that to two. Or if I want to make that three, I can make it three and so on and so forth. The other thing I can do is reduce or increase the number of rows. So at one point, like if this is one, uh, it's only going to show one row of products. And if I get a second row of products, it's going to require somebody to page with a little link down here. And then you have some other options, like you can show your uh, categories if you have them, your sorting options. You can show your product search um, up here so they can search by keyword. You can choose to crop or fit those 
uh, products. You can choose different aspect ratios. So, you know, items that are very square show well with a one by one aspect ratio, whereas items that are very wide show better with a 16 by nine. And then things that are very tall uh, show best with like a nine by 16. So you can kind of choose which one looks the best, you know, depending on your, your opinion. But now you've got a store added to your site and you can just build on that. And then the blog works the same way. You want to add a blog, you click on add blog and then the blog is added. And then you just say my first post, you're, you're just right into the blog editor. You can give it an author name. You can choose a date that you want to publish it. And then you can just start telling your story. There's a place to insert an image and also a place to insert a video if you wanted. I'm just going to choose some basic things here. You can save this as draft or you can publish it. I'm just going to publish it to show you what that looks like. I've got a list of all my blog posts. I can just go through, add a whole database of blog posts. And as I add them, they appear on this blog page. You can see now I'm on a blog page up here. And you can see when I go to my live website, now when people go to blog, they can click on that article and they can read all about what's going on there. They can leave a comment. And then I can manage those comments and everything just, you know, from the blog app. So right up here, you can see manage comments, for example. And if I create more of those blog posts, they just show up in a line. So let me create a second one just to show you. Second post, let's call it. Same author, me. And now I'm just gonna say this, this is another thing that happened. And again, just adding an image. We went to the dock. I don't know what the story is, but that's up to you. You also have a few formatting options on your uh, text there. But if you go in here and you publish this, you'll see now there's two posts. And if I escape this, a second post shows up save it, go to my live website. I'm on my blog page. Now I can read from this list of posts now that I've created for my blog. If you want to change the way those are displayed, there's a few different layouts. So like you can go horizontal and then you've got these nice big images. You can do it in a grid and that kind of puts them side by side like this. So they'll just kind of increase three wide on the page as you create more posts. Just I'm using the classic view, I call it, you know, for this example. And then you can customize, you know, your header and everything. But, you know, you see that blog is added there automatically. Now I kind of have all the pages of my site. So I'm moving my header back over here, saving that. I'm, I mean, not my header, but my menu, I'm moving it. So it's in a place where it seems like it's going to work out long term. Now down here in the footer, you can double click on these little social icons and you can add the social icons that link to other content that you've created on the web. That can be kind of helpful for getting the most traffic out of the content that you create. But at this point, we've pretty much created a website from scratch that has a store and a blog, and it's easy to create lots of blog posts, and it's easy to create lots of products. And if you have supporting information you want to add to the page you can do that on the about and there's a way to contact you and you're really just knocking it out of the park at this point point. and the only thing you need to do now is you need to connect a domain by just adding clicking add domain you can add a domain that you registered somewhere else so if you bought a donut main name for 10 bucks from some super cheap registrar that's really difficult to get on the phone and won't help you if you have any problems you can use that with web starts you just need to choose i already have a domain name and then you're going to have to know how to log into that account and change the dns or point it to an a record which can be a little bit tricky we help you with that if uh you need help because we want to get you set up with us but um, we have really great customer service. Not every registrar does. So what we love to have you do is register a new domain name because when you do that with us, you just type in, you know, if I wanted, you know, I, I talked about Bob's carpet cleaning. Probably not available, obviously not available. Uh, I'm going to say carpetcleaning1.com. You'd search for that. And if it's available, you just continue, and then it's going to require you to, upgrade to one of the paid plans because uh, the way that we see it is once you have a domain name connected with your website your 
now taking things seriously, so you're going to need real help, and we want to make sure that we can help you properly and meet your expectations. And to do that, we do charge our small monthly fees. Uh, you cannot connect a domain name to a pro plan. Uh, that is just for people who essentially want to play with web starts. If you're serious about your business, you'll want at least a pro plus, but most likely a business because that's where you're really getting the value of everything that we have to offer in an unlimited way. And, uh, it lets you create everything. But once you upgrade, uh, what happens is the domain name, Bob's carpet cleaning one.com in this example is going to automatically just start working with your website in about 90 seconds. So you'll get your email receipt. You'll get a confirmation page. Um, let's see if you go to this plan you just enter your card number in there um, you can choose whether you want domain privacy or not and that's it so once you check out you're done everything works now you can go out and start promoting your website you can get back to your um, sites page by clicking on the orb that'll list all the sites in your account you can go ahead and create additional sites for free by just clicking add new site you'll have to upgrade each site's plan uh, you know, if you want a domain name, but, uh, if you want to edit that particular site, we just built, you just click on it. We're right back into the editor up here. You'll get notifications when people fill out your forms. You'll also get an email telling you about that, uh, or if they place an order or if they leave a blog comment or any of those things, you get notified. And that's about it for this video. I appreciate you watching today and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and enable notifications so that you find out about the newest videos that I make first. And then also, uh, don't forget to go to webstarch.com and just sign up for a free account and give this a try on your own. Thanks for watching.